Okay, are you ready? Uh, I'm ready. Come on, baby. Okay, we've been waiting a long time. Wow. Hmm. That didn't sound good. Nope. Hey, hi. Welcome back to Shop Adventures number 12. I'm Lance. That's Patrick back behind the camera. And this week, I'm going to try to keep the, the, the opening topics a little bit low uh, in time here. And the reason is, is the video is going to be a little long this week. Uh, look, sometimes from time to time, we get into a video that's of greater length. Um, it's because we're getting into the finite details of how we operate and how we fix things correctly. Or, and sometimes we really want to bring you along and share that details of how to do this or that, and uh, we hope it's beneficial to you, actually. Okay, that being said, a few years ago, we bought this really neat, I call it a little baby power mill. I'm probably not supposed to call it that, but that's what I call it. And there's a secret to this machine, but anyway, it's made by the Barker Engineering Company in Cleveland, Ohio. Barker makes an AM series and a PM series. They're still in business today. This one's not. It's a very vintage, very old, very great shape. It's a Meonite forged. Okay, we're not hiding anything from you guys here. Here's what happened. Before we started YouTube, we we, we had already bought this machine from a 101-year-old man in Pasadena, California. And the family wanted to sell it because he was too old to operate it anymore. And I believe he was like the second owner of this thing, if not the first owner. It's hard to ever know. I didn't actually talk to him. Okay. So, in taking apart this machine, which we've already done, we've already done the two-part epoxy painting on this machine. It's fully been inspected, and now we're just doing some final finishing. We're going to start from there on the YouTube video series with you, bringing you along with us. A couple years ago, we removed all the bearings and took disassembling this machine, except for one bearing stuck inside of a five, I believe it's a five uh, position uh, pulley aluminum. So there's this hard-ass bearing down in this hidden blocked hole. It's a, it's a closed-in hole. We're going to share all that in the video. I don't want to talk about it. I don't know if we're successful or not. You're going to know that along with me because we're filming this that way. And I hope it works. And if it doesn't, we'll be asking you to give us some advice on what you would do to get the bearing out. Because the bearings, like all bearings on all machines we ever touch or remove here, are always replaced. You don't clean and put, put bearings back in machines in our vision. Because once you take it apart, you might as well put new bearings. It's not a big deal. You can get them on eBay. Anyway, nevertheless. We, so we're not hiding this machine. We're going to take you from the stage where we're at. We hope to start the rebuilding around December. Um, we might get into December during the holiday period because we have nothing else to do. Um, otherwise, we'll start it in January and we'll be filming this, this build here. We're going to build it from the ground up together. All of us together. And we hope you come along. So enjoy this week's video and let's all wish ourselves luck on getting this damn bearing out of the hole, shall we? Thanks. Bye. Hey, hi, welcome back. Um, we're gonna give you some little updates here. This this uh, this particular video is coming to light only because, uh, well, uh, we tried to hide it. We're, we're gonna get into that. Let me explain what's going on. This pulley is an aluminum pulley. Um, this pulley has a bearing in here and it's from a company called, Ar uh, what is it? Departure, made in the USA. They used to exist, they got bought out. And this bearings are shot. Uh, this this pulley, um, this pulley goes to our greatest little machine we've owned it for a while. We stripped it down. We uh, got it all tested out. We made sure all it was good. All the parts were disassembled. Everything's been cleaned and and checked and inspected. We've even made sure we don't have to uh, uh, scrape the ways on this machine. So we've already verified that they're, they're true and, and, and awesome. It, by the way. It's a Meonite casting, so that's pretty important to us around here. Uh, Meonite, and, and what this is, this is made in Cleveland, Ohio. This is a Barker AM series mill. They make a PM series and an AM series. They make a single spindle and a dual spindle, this kind of a, a company, and they're still made in America. That's a great company, so you check them out. Um, they're nice people. They've been really good to helping us. This machine has a secret. Um, this, what happens here, we, we, we're going to try to get this bearing out, and that's what this is all about. Um, we, we got one bearing out, and this is how they originally looked before we just slaughtered the one inside of here. 
And before anybody gets started about removing this bearing and starts bringing up a couple of things I just want to mention. If somebody starts talking about heating up the aluminum here to expand it while freezing the steel to remove it by shrinking it using dry ice, um, we already have. It did not happen. It doesn't work. Um, this bearing kind of fell out. So it gives you an idea it didn't fall out, but it came out a lot easier compared to what we're dealing with. So we were busy around here. That was a good excuse to just put this up on a shelf and put it away. We thought, well, we'll leave it upside down. Maybe the bearing will just fall out while we're not paying any attention to it, or perhaps maybe we'll just forget about it and never need to actually replace it. We wouldn't replace it if we didn't have to. The bearing shot, uh, both, both of them were. The way it mounts to the secret part of the Barker mill that, by the way, we call this mill our, our baby power mill. Um, it's a little baby uh, of, of some of your f more famous YouTubers, uh, big, big power mills to their t attorney tuckers and so forth. This... This, this, what's, what is this, this little, this, this presses into the bearing side like this under the, when the twin bearings are in here, it presses in like this for the pulley. And then on the other side, this go, this presses back into the other side of a secret component of the Barker mill, which we're going to keep secret for now because, but, but I'm not going to be able to hide it because we're going to start rebuilding this machine because our rebuilding's coming along really well. And we're going to replace the bearings. We're going to go through all of the different types of pullers and everything that we have tried for bearings. Pat's going to take over from this video when I'm done in a second here. Our little Barker power mill, just so you know, is a six and a quarter inch uh, uh, Y axis by a 20 inch Z, uh, X axis mill. Um, just so you know, the bearings we're going to use again are SKF. The, unlike the last two, the little seven and eight millimeter bearings we did, these are made in France. Those were made in Italy. Um, we're gonna we're gonna be using a model up six thousand nine dash two Z forward slash C three. Just so you can see there, I think he's Pat sharing that with you. And uh, those are the bearings that are gonna have to go into this pulley. So we're gonna give this one more shot. But here's what's really cool about us: we're gonna film this and we're gonna try to remove this bearing with some apparatuses we've created. And if it fails, we're filming it and we're going to share it with you anyway. This isn't showing you just the bright side of life over here at Active Adam because that's just not the way we are. If, if, we, if we can't get it out and we share that in the film, we're hoping that one of you will have a suggestion or an idea. Uh, we understand we could EDM this out right here. We can burn this out of here, burn off the, the races, I get it. Set the height, do the whole thing. I've done that before in my past, but uh, we're trying to do everything here in-house. That's Active Adam's whole motto. We do everything we do making our products or whatever from start to finish, that's our goal. And um, why would you wanna watch this if I'm subbing it out to somebody down the street for every little problem or challenge that comes up? So I'm gonna quit and leave for now. I'm done talking about it. Pat's gonna sit down. He's gonna share all of his great bearing polling experiences and tools that he has for this. And he's gonna share with you his next approach on how to get this bearing out of here once and for all. And then um, we're gonna film it. You're gonna see it and we'll see if it came out or if it stayed in, stay tuned. Hey, look, we're back. I said I'd come over and we'd go see what Pat has to share in regards to these uh, bearing pullers that I was sharing with the pulley. So here we are. Hi, Patrick. Hello. Okay. Um, yeah, as Lance was explaining, uh, we have an issue, obviously, trying to remove a bearing from the pulley. And it's kind of ridiculous because we have so many bearing removal tools. And that's what I'm going to go over. I just want to share with you some of the tools we have. And actually there's uh, two of the, the first two tools we have aren't applicable for this application. But I just kind of want to be thorough and just go over all of them with you. And also I want to clarify that this isn't a tutorial or a how to. You know, we just want to, I just want to go over the tools kind of, because you know, some people may not be aware of some of the tools available for removing bearings. So that's kind of, I just want to kind of just share the tools we have and then um, I'll, I'll talk about the tools we tried using, why they fail, and, and the solution I have uh, in what we believe will be the final solution to successfully remove this bearing. Okay, so the first bearing removal uh, tool is, this is a really common tool that most people have probably seen. You know, it's these bearing plates, and we actually use these a lot, where these come really helpful is let me bring this is actually the armature for a motor that actually belongs to the Barker machine 
and you know typically you'll have two bearings one at each end okay and let's just take for a second okay this bearing doesn't belong to motor but just for demonstration purposes um, I want to show it okay so let's say the bearing was mounted like that so basically we would take this over to a hydraulic press this would rest on the hydraulic table and then really simple uh, the press would push on the shaft and the bearing would come out. So it'd come out just like this. Oops. Just like that. Okay. And and this is where this is really helpful. So, and we use this a lot. Okay. Um, so that's how that tool works. And there's, there's other components to it. I won't get into it. Um, uh, but I just kind of want to share that really quickly. Okay, got it. Okay, the next puller we have um, are these. There are two and three arm, uh, uh, sometimes referred to as gear pulleys, or, I'm sorry, gear or pulley removal removers. And how this works is, you know, so we have a bearing. Here, let me demonstrate it again. Okay, so basically you would open up uh, these arms, you know, and you, these would go underneath the bearing. You turn this and it would just pop off the bearing. Okay. And, um, and this kit, for example, it has basically, it has two sizes. Uh, one set has three arms. The other set has two arms. Really, for uh, if you can, you want to use a three-arm version. But in some, especially some strange gears or whatnot, uh, you just can't use a three-arm version. So that's why there's a two-arm version. Okay. So these tools, so just um, briefly go over these two tools. If you notice, these really accomplish kind of the same thing. They're for removing bearings off of shafts. And this is a good example. Okay. So we're done with that. Okay, the next tool is, is this tool. This is a blind bearing puller set. Okay, and then how this works is, if we apply it to this pulley, what you would do is you would take, you would, uh, take the diameter of the inner race of this bearing you would find the appropriate. You got that? I think we're doing good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And here, let me just say this. This bearing's too big. So let's just take for example. Let's say this bearing was in, you know, inside this pulley. So what we would do is we'd find the tool that just. Okay, this is good. See. This is pretty tight. It goes through, but it's, you know, very little play. You got that, Lance? I think we do. Yeah. Let me get on to that side over here. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. There you go. See, and what you do is, see, once it's in there, then you just turn this. And what it does is, by turning this, uh, the, the, it's like an expanding collet or expanding mandrel. And see, once you turn it, now it's stuck and see if this was here in this cavity let me bring it over here in this case let me just so you get a better look on how this is used oh i know that style bearing puller bar right there bearing puller shaft okay so let's say this was in the cavity okay like so and basically it's really easy uh this you just bang it out like this and believe it or not, it comes out really easy, you know, just from the force. And that's how that works. So far, so good, Lance? Yeah, I think we're getting here. I think we're doing all right. I see okay. another box still coming up. <laughs> still another tool. Uh-oh. Someday I'll actually figure out where Pat hides all his little goodies and toys <laughs> so that maybe I can play with some of them. He's pretty neat. <laughs> <laughs> okay and lastly this is actually an skf tool sure. and this is a really unique tool not many people have seen this 
And maybe you can get get into there. Yeah, good view of the diagram right here. Okay, and you see from the illustration, this is a really unique pooler because if you notice, okay, this I'm, I'll demonstrate it for you so you have a better uh, outlook on how this works. But if you notice, these arms, they actually uh, go into the bearing, and that's how they, they actually uh, go into the ray, the outside race. And that's how it secures itself, and it pulls the bearing. You tighten the screw right here, and it actually pulls the bearing out. And see, if you, as you can see, why this tool is so critical uh, for removal in some applications is this illustration is a good example. Okay, the bearing's in a cavity, but there's also a shaft uh, that's, that's uh, in the bearing as well. So how else would you remove this bearing? Oh, yeah, you know, it's an internal uh, it's, and an external yeah, shaft. Yeah, so in this case, you can't use an external uh, removal tool. You can't use an internal removal tool. So this is really, I mean, uh, this, is a, this is a really critical tool for this type of application. Yeah. Okay, so you think... So we thought, okay, uh, this looking at this uh, scenario, this would be a great tool. You know, as you notice, um, uh, I had a, uh, it was a seal bearing, so I already, you have to remove the seal. And okay, in our case, uh, these bearings are six thousand nine bearings. So we just go look in our chart right here. See 6009. Okay, so then it tells us for the arm size, we want to use an A4. Okay. Okay. So if we go here, okay, right here, A4. So these are the arms they want us to use. Okay. I have to look. Okay, so they want us to use the A4 arms. Okay, for the puller, they want us to use the M20 puller. Okay, and I believe that would be this big guy right here. Okay, we don't need that part. Okay, and how this how this generally works is basically, if you notice, these arms have these little notches, and they're specifically made to insert into the cavity of the bearing. Oh, here, bring up one of those arms. Let's get a closer look at the arm, just the arm. Let's get a nice look at the tip of the arm there. I can't. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let me do this. It's okay. Here, help me out. Just so we can all see what you got here. Okay, let me know when you're in focus. I'm in pretty good focus there. Oh yeah, there are, see that claw? Yeah, I see it. See the chamfers, the claw, very nice, okay. okay hold, hold that view right there. Okay. See, that little notch right there actually inserts outward and it holds on to the outer race right there. See? Okay. Okay. And, and, and you want you, they want you to use all four. So basically you'd insert them, you know, all four of them like this. Okay, just like that. Okay. And then this tool, so this would go here, and then these insert on the top, just like that. See? See, so just like that. They just the, snap in. Yeah, they just snap in. So you and you'd have all four. And in this case, all you do is just tighten the bolt. Okay, in this case, because we don't have a shaft in here. Uh, there's a number of things we could put, we could put a block right here. We could put something here uh, so that way it has uh, the screw has a place to rest on to help pull the bearing. So this would be a great solution, obviously, because you just tighten the screw screw and the bearing will just come right out. Okay, but here's the problem: is this tool is made only when the bearing is on the surface right here. See, if you notice, we have this cavity right here. And the problem is we have two issues. To insert these, we need to insert them in an angle. See, and we can't. See, 
because the, because the bearing's too deep, we can't even insert this tool into the bearing cavity. See, we'd have to, so you have to go into an angle to, oops, actually. So we'd have to get into an angle and then, then uh, and then have it go into the bearing cavity like so. But see, we can because this is in the way. And also, um, I think we may be, no, maybe that would fit. So really the issue we had is we can't install these in the bearings because the bearing just sits too low into the cavity. So we we're really disappointed because, you know, this tool was really our last shot. Hey, wasn't this about the time that uh, this pulley went and disappeared somewhere on a shelf for about a year or two? Exactly. It's been <laughs> that long. <laughs> and we were hoping it would just fall out by itself. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, we were disappointed. And we tried everything. I and mean, we tried all our tools. We tried, you know, like Lance mentioned, we tried... You know, we tried heating it, we tried dry ice, we tried penetrating oil. I mean, we tried everything we could think of. So, so we put it, you know, like Lance said, we put it on the shelf and just, you know, went along with our life and did other things. But the Barker project has come up again, so it taunted us again. So, uh, after thinking about it, I think I have the solution. Okay. Okay, so going back, to this puller, it would be nice, you ask, okay, if they made a size, so this is the largest size I believe they make and what we have. Maybe a little larger is available, but they don't have one for the size of this bearing. So you can see we're really, I mean, we're far ways off. That's really undersized, yeah. Yeah, okay, the other big problem we have is if you notice, we have almost no clearance underneath the bearing race right there. See, so you got a good. Yeah, that's, I guess they call that a blind. That's a blind hole bearing mount, isn't it? Right, and it's really blind. I mean, gosh, it's even internal. Even the ID of the uh, bearing is far is far greater than 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 the base down there. Just the, that bottom hole does nothing for us. Absolutely, and see, the problem is, even if they made a size of this tool for this bearing. I'm not quite sure. See, there's nothing to, there's no room for it. See, if you notice, let me see if you can get, see if you notice at the very end, it, this tool, there's a lip. And this is the lip that catches on the inner bearing race, which allows this tool to oh. pull the bearing out, you see. So it's really crucial that this lip is able to catch the inside race. You know, and if you could see, see, it's not catching at all, you know, just because this lip is too big. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Okay, we bought this, uh, this is a mandrel. It's an expanding mandrel. Okay, we've used one in one of our recent videos for another project. And how it works is you basically, you would insert this, like for example, you'd insert this. Uh, on the inside a uh, hole of a part, for example, then you tighten the screw. By tightening the screw, it expands this mandrel and holds it. Okay, really common use for this is if you want to machine a part where you can't hold the part on the outside, you can only hold the part on the inside cavity. And this works great. You know, what you do is, you know, if you're lucky, you can find a mandrel at the, with the same exact size you need of your internal cavity, or uh, these are made to also turn. So you can turn these to size. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, we're basically gonna make one of these tools using this mandrel. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna turn this to this exact diameter of the, the bearing race, but I'm also gonna leave a little lip at the end, you know, just like you see with this tool, okay? But in, in our case, as I showed you, this lip, even this little lip, I mean, is, is not catching just because we have no clearance. So I'm gonna be really careful to see if I can turn a really small, thin lip, just enough that we can, you know, insert this and catch on that inter, because there is, I mean, it's very tiny, 
I mean, a little tiny uh, uh, clearance right there. I mean, so small, but we, we don't see any. We don't see any other any other option. See if I can give our viewers a better look in there. In that sure. Bottom of that bearing, it's really difficult, guys. So. I'm trying to show you, but you can see it basically bottoms out. There's a little bit of a curvature there where the, the race of the bearing is naturally got that rounded uh, corner for putting bearings on and taking them off. Yeah, see this clearance right here that I'm pointing with the wooden stick? Okay, that's basically the chamfer on the internal race. So that's what we're hoping to utilize is basically the chamfer right there to be able to catch on that by machining a little lip on the mandrel, okay? So, we're, so again, we're gonna turn this. In, we're gonna turn the, this whole diameter to the dimension of this internal race, while leaving a really thin little lip. Okay. So, and we gotta be careful because you know, remember, we gotta insert this into the bearing. So, you know, so we're gonna have to. Uh, we can't. The lip can't be. Uh, the diameter of the lip can't be too large because then we won't be able to fit this inside. So it just has to be large enough where we can force this in and hopefully it catches. It's still enough material to have strength to pull it back out. Yeah, and so fortunately we have a hole on the other side because we that's really critical so we could tighten the mandrel. Yeah, See. good point. Okay, so that's our next step. We're going to take this to the lathe now. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and turn it. Uh, and let's see how it goes. If once I turn it, um, I'm gonna film the turning so you guys can kind of see the whole process of turning this. And then after we're after I'm done with this, uh, Lance will come back and film me, and we'll give it a shot. And we will we're gonna share with you if it's if it's successful or a failure, you know. And if if we fail at this, we're actually gonna ask you know our viewers. You know if they can assist us if they can have if they have any thoughts suggestions you know hopefully it doesn't get to that you know hopefully this is a successful video and um let's give it a shot okay thank you we'll be back okay
Okay, we're back with a little short update with Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Hi. Okay. Um, as you just saw on the B-roll footage, um, I was able to turn the mandrel, and I hope I got a good focus for you and uh, showing you the little lip I made, um, which is going to grab the bearing. Okay. Unfortunately, we didn't record uh, putting the mandrel in because we had to think about it and try a few things because this is really difficult. It's really hard. We're able, as you can see, let me make sure I get this. So you can see, we're able to insert the mandrel into the bearing race. You got that, Lance? I think we're doing good right there. Okay. And then once once we got the mandrel all the way in, we're able to access the screw. And oh, I can see that real good right there. Stay right there for a sec. Sure. There you go. So, you There's know, the screw. And so it's in there. We t I tightened it. Yeah, it's not coming out. I mean, it's going to break before this thing slides out. So this was really successful. All oh, right. Um, the next thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to uh, put some penetrating oil on the outside just because anything that we can help it, you know, we're going to do. And what we're going to use is we're going to use Croil. Uh, we've been using this. There's so many formulas, but we've been using this for years and it's been successful for us, so we just continue using it. But we're going to be really careful because we only want to get the penetrating oil just on the outside race. You know, obviously we don't want to go on the inside race because we don't want, you know, we want this, the mandrel to stay secure with the internal race of the bearing. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray this. We're going to let it sit for about 10, 15 minutes, and then we're going to come back. And then we're going to show you actually pressing it. So you guys are going to see if it fails or if it's, or if it's successful. We're all in here, so here all we go. Right. Be right back in a few minutes. Okay, we're back. Um, okay, we waited about 15 minutes for the penetrating oil to sit. So I think we're ready. Okay, this is how we're going to do it. I've set up the press already. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to press right on top of the mandrel. Okay. and. Um, I wasn't sure if it was okay to press on the bolt itself that tightens the mandrel and expands it. So I'm going to use this little piece we had for another project. And this is actually going to come just press right around the bolt, as you can see. Okay, so we're going to put that in here. Okay, put this in here. Darn it. Darn it. Darn it. <laughs> Okay, let's okay, make sure the bearing, okay, I don't want to obstruct the bearing coming out. Okay, that should be good enough for now. Make sure we're aligned. We're good. Okay, are you ready? Uh, I'm ready. Come on, baby. Okay, we've been waiting a long time. Wow. Hmm. That didn't sound good. Nope. Let's see what happened. No, I think that was the bearing. The bearing was in there so tight, that was just the sound of the bearing letting go. Oh, wow. Because it's the mandrels in here. The mandrel didn't slip. Let's take a look in the hole. Oh, it's going. Yeah, see the, if you can see. Yeah, let's go in there. Hold on. Let's share this moment here. I see some air down there. See, it did move uh, up or down. Yeah, depends on which way you look at it. <laughs> well, this is exciting. Okay, so let's let's keep going. Oh. Boy, that was in there tight. I thought you just broke. That's what I thought. Okay, we're making a whole new pulley. That's what I'm thinking, you know. <laughs> I didn't want to make a pulley. 
Okay, so let's continue. Yeah, and too bad I wasn't looking at the gauge because I could see how much tonnage that was. It took to move that. It was a lot though, I could feel it. I think we've hit the bottom, so I'm gonna just go up a little bit. Okay, that's good. Let's take a look at it. Oh, look at that. Oh, all righty. Oh, this is looking I mean, It's good. been three years, so we're, we're two or three years now. We're, we're getting pretty excited to know that the day come. It's a big deal to us. And hopefully you're enjoying this with us. I hope so. I just gotta make clearance with the bearing now. And I'm using these paper towels because I don't want to uh, make any indentions into the pulley. See if you're wondering why I'm doing this. Okay, I think we've got good clearance on each side. Oops, but I'm not on it. Let's see. Okay, that's good. Here, let me. I gotta stay out of your way. Okay. Make sure I have good alignment. Well, I'll admit, I thought the mandrel really slipped out and broke. That's what I figured, I figured it split. I mean, <laughs> I really wasn't expecting that. Okay, let's give that a shot. I'm not gonna be happy till those two parts are separated, you know that, right? I don't care how close it is. <laughs> okay, I mean, you need to. extension rod there. Yeah. Let's get that final little bit. It's about ready to drop out. I think so. And here we go. All right. What do we have? Wow. Look at that. How many years? Almost two years. Yeah. Two years. Almost three. I'm not quite sure. But yeah. We, mm -hmm. just, we just wanted to pretend it wasn't there. Let's see how... Oh, there's that. What we were trying to share. There we go. We actually got it hooked in there. Well, and you can see... Yeah, see the uh, the little lip is holding right on the chamfer right there. There it is. It didn't. It stayed right in place too. Yeah. It's what a great mandrel. What a great idea to machine that lip. Well, that'll do it. Okay. Wow. That was a relief. Um, Patrick put a lot of effort into planning how he was going to get a lip built to go underneath that bearing, and a little discovery was made after the bearing came out which was a little, there's just a little lip in here and he doesn't have to really show it. But that did did help us a little bit on the standoff for the little lip he built on this little arbor here that, that allowed him to get up under here, but he didn't need it. But but it was there and we didn't know and no one would have known um, from what we had. So we just wanted to get past the bearing stage after these years were so ecstatic. Um, that was the last part of the disassembly of the Barker AM series mill with the secret attachments. And, it, you know, it's already been painted. Um, this is just one of the covers. It's already been stripped. It's already been painted. It's already been disassembled. We're now in the inspection stage, and we're going to be going into the assembly stage. And that's when these new bearings will be placed and everything else. We have every bearing for the machine, every part, including a few from the factory that needed to be added as we didn't get them from our the buyer that was a 100-year-old man that ran this machine in Pasadena, California. So... We'll be back. Um, I hope you enjoyed this this video, and we appreciate it. And uh, boy, we, we were going to have to come and ask for help, and you didn't. We didn't have to, but we'll have 
challenges I'm sure you in the future that we'll ask for your help with. So thank you. Bye. Hey, we hope you enjoyed this week's video. And please don't hesitate to subscribe. And did you know, we really do value getting those comments. We love to answer any question you may have for us. Thank you.